Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make an easy and delicious Thanksgiving dinner for a small family. This will easily feed two adults with leftovers or it will feed three to four adults comfortably and then we're going to follow up Thanksgiving dinner with a dessert. I'm making small batch pumpkin pie bars. First step, we're gonna do a Thanksgiving sheet pan dinner. Now, I looked at lots and lots of different recipes for Thanksgiving sheet pan dinners, but I liked, um, I guess, like the entree and sides in this particular recipe, which I will link in the description box below for you. Now, just like with Thanksgiving, this is not difficult to make at all, but there are different steps to this. Um, but like I said, every one of them is easy. We're gonna start out with the turkey. So here's what I'm going to use for the turkey. First up, we have a turkey breast. Now this is skin on and bone in. I wanted to get a boneless, but I couldn't find a boneless breast with um, the skin on. You can of course use whatever kind of turkey you prefer. You could do one of like the turkey breast roasts. You could do turkey tenderloins. You just need to adjust the cooking time. In addition to the turkey, we're going to make like a seasoned butter. So we need some softened butter. I've got kosher salt, pepper, minced garlic, fresh rosemary. I had that on hand, but you can use dried if you want. And then the recipe didn't call for poultry seasoning, but I wanted to use it. And I forgot to mention, but I found this turkey breast at Publix. I've got the oven preheating to 375 degrees. In this small bowl, I'm going to add in my softened butter. And if you forget to soften your butter, you can just pop it in the microwave for like 10 seconds and it'll soften up for you. Next, I'm gonna add in the minced garlic. I'm using the stuff from the jar. You can, of course, mince up your own. Then I'm going to add in the salt, pepper, poultry seasoning, and fresh rosemary. Now, you could use fresh or dried sage, uh, thyme, parsley, whatever you, know, you or your family like. If you like more of like a Cajun-style turkey, you could use Cajun seasoning, whatever you like. So once I've got that butter mixed up really well, I'm gonna set it to the side. Here, I've got my sheet pan. And I'm gonna take a piece of foil, put the turkey on the foil, and then I decided to season the underside of the turkey with some of the salt, pepper, and poultry seasoning. Now for the top of the turkey, all I'm doing here is you wanna be careful with this. Just take your fingers and separate the skin from the breast meat. We're gonna take some of that seasoned butter and slather it underneath the skin, on top of the skin, and on the back side of the turkey. Once we've got it generously buttered and seasoned, I'm going to take that foil and um, just, uh, you know, like press up the sides to form a little boat so that the juices, um, you know, we can use that for the gravy. This is going to go into the preheated oven and bake for 30 minutes. Now, this turkey breast is not done at this point. We're just giving it a heads up, but here's what it looked like after about 30 minutes. Here's what I'm going to use for the stuffing. First up for the bread. Really, you can use whatever bread you want. Just know that whatever kind of bread you use is gonna affect the flavor of the stuffing. For example, here I'm using sourdough, so the stuffing is gonna taste you know, more like a sour bread. If you're using like a sweet Hawaiian roll or something like that, you're gonna have a sweeter tasting stuffing. Um, so I would suggest doing like sourdough or white bread or uh, maybe like an Italian or French loaf. Then I've got some butter, some of that fresh rosemary finely chopped, garlic powder, again, the recipe didn't call for poultry seasoning, but I'm adding it, some salt and pepper. The recipe I used called for two eggs, but I decided to try it with one egg and uh, you know it turned out just fine, but you can use two if you'd prefer to do that. We're gonna need some chicken broth. I'm using water and chicken bouillon powder. I've got an onion, some fresh parsley, and celery. Now, I believe the recipe said to melt the butter in a saucepan, add the diced onions and celery and saute that, but I'm all for making things easier, less steps, less dishes. So here's what I like to do. I put the butter into a glass bowl, microwave safe bowl. I'm gonna add in the onion and celery. If you've been with me for a while, you know I hate celery, so I dice the celery up as small as I could possibly get it. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt to that, not a lot, um, but I'm using unsalted butter. And then I'm gonna pop this into the microwave. And I cooked this for about two minutes. What that does is two things at once. One, it's gonna melt that butter, and two, 
you're softening up the onions and celery and you're not having to, you know, dirty up a whole nother dish and different step and all that jazz. Now I let the onions and celery and butter sit for just a couple minutes to cool down a little bit before I added the egg in. Once I've added the egg, I'm gonna add in the chopped parsley as well as the rosemary. And just like with the turkey, you can use whatever fresh or dried herbs you want to this. Now I'm gonna add some salt and pepper as well as the garlic powder and poultry seasoning. Now, I know some people like to add sausage into their stuffing. You absolutely could cook some up and throw it in here. You could also add in uh, apples. You could do different vegetables like mushrooms or bell peppers, whatever you all like. Now, we are going to mix in our herbs and seasonings and then add in some of that chicken broth and give that a stir. Once we've added that, it's time to add in our bread. Now, most people like to cut their bread in larger chunks than what I've got here, but I like it in smaller dices just do your preference doesn't matter either way but you do want to toast your bread you can do that in the oven of course I just popped it in the air fryer at like 380 degrees for about five minutes we're going to add that toasted bread into our bowl give it a really good mix and then we're adding Addy, we're ready to add it to our sheet pan. Now, this just came out of the oven, so it is hot. Do not touch the sheet pan without using, you know, oven mitts or something, but I removed the turkey with the foil boat. I'm going to add that stuffing and just add it to one side. I'm going to put the turkey breast on top of the stuffing and then set that to the side. We're going to get started on the other items that are going to go on this. Now, first up, I am using Brussels sprouts. I saw lots of different recipes calling for different vegetables. You could do green beans, you could do broccoli, um, you know, whatever you want to use. I decided to do the Brussels sprouts. So here's what I've got for those Brussels sprouts. I am going to have these and then we need some olive oil, salt, pepper, minced garlic, and then fresh cranberries. In this bowl here, I have the halved Brussels sprouts. I'm going to add a drizzle of olive oil and you can use avocado oil or whatever oil you prefer. I'm going to add in some cracked black pepper and then some sea salt. Last but not least, I'm gonna do a little bit of minced garlic and then give that a good toss. And if you're like, wait, Megan, what about the cranberries? We're gonna hold off on adding them. They do not need to cook nearly as long as the Brussels sprouts. So we're gonna add those at the end. So give that a good mix, set it to the side. Now for the sweet potatoes, we're gonna do like almost a twice baked loaded sweet potato. So first up, you need a couple of sweet potatoes and I would definitely go for ones on the thinner side. If you use a really thick or a big sweet potato, it's gonna take a lot longer to cook than the rest of your ingredients. If all you can find or all you have are larger sweet potatoes, I would maybe um, like pop them in the microwave and give them a head start for maybe 10 or 15 minutes. I've got some olive oil, cinnamon, mini marshmallows, brown sugar, and butter. So to prepare the potatoes, these have been washed really well and I patted them dry. We're going to slice them in half lengthwise. And you wanna be careful with this. I find sweet potatoes can be a little hard to cut through, so make sure you keep your fingers out of the way. We're going to drizzle the potatoes um, once they've been sliced with some of the olive oil, a little bit of salt, and just rub that on the cut side. Now we're going to take our Brussels sprouts and place those on to the baking dish. You want to put that on just like a quarter of the sheet pan. And then on the other quarter, we're going to lay out our sweet potatoes. So once we lay out the sweet potatoes, this is going to go into that oven. Again, remember it's at 375 degrees. And again, remember the sheet pan has already been in the oven. So you really want to be careful with this. Now we're going to bake this for about another 30 to 45 minutes or so until that turkey is at least 165 degrees internal temperature. At that point, we're gonna remove the turkey from the sheet pan, place it onto like a separate dish or a cutting board, tint it with foil. Now we're gonna turn our attention to the veggies. So I'm just tossing the Brussels sprouts a little bit. I'm going to add on some of the fresh cranberries 
and these when we put them in the oven they're going to pop and become uh, like little pulls of cranberry sauce almost now once i've added the cranberries i'm going to take a fork and go um, to my sweet potatoes as you can see i'm just kind of separating them a little fluffing the potato a little bit i'm going to add some butter a little bit of salt remember salt is just a, a flavor enhancer and i'm going to add a little bit of cinnamon and then uh, you want to add the brown sugar. I mean, you can add it now. I forgot, so I go in and do it later. But we're going to pop this back into the oven for about 10 minutes or so. Last but not least, I'm going to add on some mini marshmallows. And then this goes into the oven one last time for just about five minutes until those marshmallows are melted and get toasty and your Brussels sprouts are tender. And this is what the stuffing and potatoes and Brussels sprouts look like when they were done. While the turkey rested and those vegetables were finishing up in the oven, we're gonna make the gravy. Now you can absolutely use canned gravy or the stuff from a packet, but making homemade, y'all, it is so good. It's so delicious, it's easy, and you probably have the ingredients that you need already. So here's what I'm going to use. First up, we've got the turkey dripping, so we're gonna use them. If you don't have them, no worries, just skip it. We'll need some butter, flour, Chicken broth, and I would have preferred to have used turkey broth, but I didn't have any, and my store hasn't got them in for Thanksgiving yet. Uh, but you could use any kind of broth. You know, if you're doing like a beef gravy, you could do beef flavored, seafood flavored, whatever you want to do. And then to season this up, again, use whatever seasonings you like. This is just what I'm using today. I'm going to do some salt, pepper. The recipe called for onion powder and garlic powder, so I'm going to use that. And then when my dad makes his giblet gravy, he uses poultry seasoning and this Kitchen Bouquet browning seasoning sauce. So I've got them on hand, and I'm going to use them, and, you know, that way it'll also taste a little like dad's Thanksgiving gravy. So super, super easy. If you know how to make, like, a bechamel sauce or a roux, that's basically what we're doing here. So in this saucepan, this is on medium heat. We're going to melt the butter. You could really use any kind of fat that you want. Once the butter's melted, we're going to add in that flour, whisk it, and let it cook for about two minutes. Next, we're going to add in the chicken broth. Now, while you do this, you want to make sure that you're whisking constantly. Add a little bit, whisk it. Once you see, you know, most of the flour and butter mixture incorporated, you can add a little bit more. Just make sure you're whisking. The lumps will whisk themselves out. Now I'm going to add in those turkey drippings and give that another good whisk. We are going to bring this to a simmer and let it simmer for a few minutes until it starts to thicken up. At that point, I'm going to season it. I'm adding in that kitchen bouquet. I'm going to season this to taste with some of that salt, pepper, the garlic powder, onion powder, and poultry seasoning. You want to mix this really, really well. And then, yeah, once it's as thick as what you want it uh, to be, it's done. Just make sure you give it a taste. Adjust the seasonings to your taste. And you can, like, turn this on a very, very low heat. I set it off to the side and just covered it with a lid, and it stayed warm for a while. I put it into my gravy boat. This is what it looked like. And like I said, y'all, this gravy was delicious. All right, here is the finished sheet pan dinner with the turkey and everything all i did was slice up the turkey and then we've got the stuffing the potatoes the brussels sprouts and i serve this just on one big platter but for your thanksgiving celebration you can place everything on individual platters or in bowls if you would prefer to do so but here are the plates so we've got the turkey the gravy that stuffing the sweet potatoes the brussels sprouts and y'all this was delicious. This was so good. That turkey breast was so juicy. It was so tender. It had really good flavor. We loved the stuffing and the gravy over it was so good. The sweet potatoes, I mean, you can't go wrong. And if you prefer savory sweet potatoes, like especially I've had comments from people in other countries who were like, you put sugar and marshmallows on your sweet potatoes? That's a dessert. Yeah, <laughs> technically that's here we like it in, in the United States and especially in the South. And I do eat sweet potatoes savory as well. But for Thanksgiving, this is more traditional to have it like that. Uh, but if you prefer savory, you can absolutely do it that way. I would just mix a little butter and salt in the sweet potato you can maybe add a little bit of sage if you wanted to but just keep it simple um you could also add pecans to this to give it a good crunch i think that would be delicious but yeah this was so so good we loved this meal so if you need something to make for yourself for you and a family member or you and a friend or you know 
you and a couple kiddos or, you know, whatever. If you're looking for a smaller Thanksgiving dinner to serve, highly recommend you try this. Everything was delicious. And like I said, the recipe will be, or the recipes rather, will be in the description box below for you. Now for the dessert, we're gonna make small batch pumpkin pie bars. These were so easy to put together and were delicious. If you love pumpkin pie, you'll love this. Here are the ingredients you'll need. We've got some salt, pumpkin pie spice. You'll need some crescent rolls. Now I have one of the smaller cans here. This has four crescent rolls in it. What you could do is you could buy just a regular size can cook up four of the rolls to go with your Thanksgiving sheet pan dinner and then use the other four rolls for this recipe. You'll need a can of pureed pumpkin. Make sure you get pureed pumpkin, not pumpkin pie filling. Those are two very different things. You'll need evaporated milk. And then I saw a couple different recipes for this. Some said to use granulated sugar. I saw a couple that said to use corn syrup. You could use either or. I'm doing granulated sugar. We need brown sugar and then eggs. I've got my oven preheating to 350 degrees. In a bowl, I'm going to add in my egg. I'm going to give that a really good whisk, and then I'm gonna add in the evaporated milk, give it another good whisk, and then we're gonna add in the canned pumpkin. Now, this is a small batch recipe, and so we're gonna use half this can. You could double this recipe if you're doing it for a larger group, and then you'd use the full can, but don't worry, that's not going to waste. I'm gonna make some yummy pumpkin muffins. You could put it in pancake batter, French toast batter, all different uses for it. Now, once I've mixed in that pumpkin really well, we're gonna add in the sugar. So I've got the brown sugar, the granulated sugar, and if you don't have pumpkin pie spice, uh, you can just Google it. Pumpkin pie spice is a mixture of, I, I want to say like cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves, something like that. So, um, you know, if you have those individual spices, like I said, just Google a recipe and you can make your own. Now, once I've added in that pumpkin pie spice, we're going to add a little bit of salt and give that a really, really good mix. You want to make sure this is really well combined. All right, I'm going to pause for a second because I want to talk about pan sizes. So I kind of combined two different recipes to make this. With the one main recipe that I use, it suggested using a 5x5 five five pan, which I did not have. I had this disposable 7x3, and then I have like my regular 9x9 nine nine pans. Once I saw how much filling this was, I was worried it wouldn't fit in the 7x3, so I switched over to my glass 9x9. Nine nine. Um, I'm going to layer the pan with some parchment paper, and you do want to keep the sides up so that uh, you know you have handles that you can pull the bars out when they're done. I'm going to take that crescent roll dough, press it into the bottom of the dish, and pinch the seams together. Now, like I said, I kind of combined two recipes. I took the filling from one recipe and then combined it with the idea of using crescent roll dough as the crust from the other recipe. Uh, but the filling recipe that I'll have, and I'll have both linked down below, but the filling recipe does include a homemade crust. So if you don't wanna use the crescent roll dough, you wanna make your own, you can follow that. But once we've added that crust, we're gonna pour in the filling. How long it takes to bake really depends on the size of your pan. It could take 45 minutes to an hour or so. Once you uh, insert a toothpick into the center and it comes out clean, it's done. Now you do wanna let these cool completely, at least two or three hours. You can pop these into the fridge for about 15 minutes or so uh, to help firm up a little bit so that you can cut these. And y'all, I'm sorry, I was not consistent when I cut them. They were like all different sizes, but that's totally fine. They were still delicious. Now, I served this up with a little bit of the whipped topping, and these were delicious. They were so good. I will say, though, that I do wish I would have used like the 7x3 or that I had a 5x5 or a 6x6 because I would have wanted a thicker... Um, layer of the pumpkin pie filling, but they were still delicious. So if you're like me and you don't have the smaller pan, you just have an eight by eight or nine by nine, these will still turn out just fine and delicious for you. All right, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this gave you some inspiration. I know from personal experience, just cooking for two, sometimes especially with holidays or special occasions, you just find yourself grabbing something easy. You know, you're like, well, I don't feel like making a, a full meal for just the two of us or, you know, I I don't want to go through the hassle of making a big meal and cleaning up and all that. But still, for holidays, special occasions, or any occasion, 
still celebrate it, even if it's just one or two or a few, uh, you know, people still take that time and celebrate it. You can make a special meal like this one that's delicious, but still easy and totally manageable. So, like I said, hope you give this a try. And if you um, also want to try those pumpkin pie bars, like I said, they were delicious. I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.